now talk about a sustainable way of growing Africa's food systems. Agra has launched its strategic plan uh, here in Ghana, and they've done that for Ghana, outlining its uh, vision uh, for the years 2023 to 2027. The strategy uh, has, uh, with a strong focus on achieve, uh, achieving food security, uh, which aims to address uh, the pressing challenges uh, faced uh, by uh, the agricultural sector. We're joined in studio now by Vice President, Strategic Partnership and uh, COP, that's uh, Vanessa Adams. Uh, she's joining us for more on this. Uh, it's uh, amazing to have you join us uh, here on The Pulse. It's Welcome. A pleasure, thank you. Uh, for many who are not, um, of course, aware of what Agra does and how you run your operations, are you able to give us a brief background to uh, your activities, particularly here in Africa? Hope you have it's a very <laughs> hot topic. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having us here. We're so pleased to be in Ghana. Uh, I always feel I'm coming home to Ghana. So, as you know, food security in Africa is, uh, is a critical conversation. Uh, Africa is basically uh, currently being hit by climate variability, trade disputes, uh, price elevations, and um, as you know, the, the brunt of the burden always falls to the rural locally based smaller farmers uh, who end up being price takers rather than driving their own agenda. So Agra has always since inception uh, when Kofi Annan called for an African uh, solution so to food security, African. absolutely. And so uh, since 2006, uh, Agra has had a home in Kenya and in Ghana. We operate in 11 countries and we're expanding to 15 in this new strategic period. I see. And what makes this uh, a timely intervention for the country uh, has got to do with our huge import bills and, and the fact that in the next few years, Africa would have to feed a population that is above the world uh, population average, uh, I mean the average that we have now. Uh, what forms of strategies are you recommending in this new framework? I'm happy that you're talking about uh, the growing population. Uh, actually, uh, food, uh, people forget, is consumer driven, right? And so um, each country has their own profiles and preferences for foods. But what we're encouraging is actually, uh, first of all, a renewed focus on nutrition, uh, nutritious foods, which are nutritious and healthy for, for uh, importantly, for women and for youth but also that um, it's good for the soil. Soil fertility is such a huge issue across the continent. And of course, food doesn't grow in soil which is degraded and, and, um, and therefore there are issues of uh, soil acidity and productivity. One of the biggest threats which we all discuss is climate change. But in fact, if uh, farmers are able to have a more um, diversified growing systems using digital and data-driven evidence-based science technology solutions that enables them to optimize the land under cultivation. But for Ghana in particular, you know, the government has been pushing towards agroindustrialization. We want to see more processing locally, more value addition, not just being a food producing country, right? Uh, and so Agra has also been looking at the corridors by which food is also traded. So it's a, there's a focus, of course, on growing markets within the region. Being the host of the African continental free trade area is so critical for Ghana and for all of Africa as well. Uh, we'll talk about the potentials for, for that framework, uh, but also talking about climate change brings up the issue that's of concern to many eco-conscious citizens, the um, issues relating to illegal mining, galamse as we call it here, and how that is degrading arable land, uh, which of course investment should have been going there in, in growing more food and ensuring that we are food secure. How worried are you about this trend and what more forms of technology innovations can we uh, put in place to drive change? So humans are amazingly innovative and we're um, uh, every day I wake up with renewed uh, uh, examples, hopes, ideas. In fact, uh, one of your other guests today is a young woman uh, entrepreneur who is winning an award. And one of our speakers earlier actually was a woman entrepreneur who was awarded in one of our youth uh, entrepreneurial competitions for her innovation using, uh, I think it's called turkey berries. There's a local name for this, into making into tea for iron fortified um, foods. 
And so that innovative spirit, that ability to adapt and, and to come up with solutions is something that we see and we want to encourage and facilitate. In fact, we've built a whole platform called Value for Her for women entrepreneurs who grow their networks and grow their capacities. And there are more than 4,000 women across Africa in 39 countries. And Ghana has always been a driver of women leadership and women entrepreneurship. So while I think we can be discouraged by some of the devastation which a few people can cause, uh, there is such reason for seeing hope and uh, our growing youth populations is constantly driving innovation. Inspiring. Uh, but then let's talk about after. 1.3 uh, trillion markets, that's the potential. And we know that that could also feed into this whole strategy of ensuring that the continent is secure, food secure. Um, looking at the framework itself, it's um, off to a very slow-paced start, but w w what do you envisage as part of the plan and how countries can feed into the continental free trade framework in order to build food security at the national level? So again, I'm going to um, alternate between dire situation and huge opportunity, right? right? Because uh, one of the, the, the um, highlights of our year is we host an annual food systems forum. Uh, it was here in Ghana in 2019. You might recall we talked about digital solutions for African agriculture. And um, this year we're focusing on resilience and recovery around food systems. And every September, more than 3,000 stakeholders, diehards, experts, scientists, and political leaders come together to really drive the agenda. And this year is the, the focus on AU supporting the African continental free trade area coming into force. On the one hand, it appears to be slow. On the other hand, we have the potential to leapfrog. You were around, I was around when cell phones started being operational in Africa. From one day to the next, <laughs> The whole transformation occurred. And penetration is so high at it's, this point. It, and in fact, uh, you know, communities use one cell yes. phone, just like old, uh, in the old days, you right. might have one radio that everybody would sit around and listen, right? So it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one correlation. People really share information and opportunities as soon as they get it. And so I really believe that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to touch the microphone. <laughs> it's fine. I believe that um, the leadership in Africa has really with the externalities of the Russia-Ukraine crisis and the disruption and availability of certain raw materials, vegetable oils, wheat, um, the spiking prices of fertilizer, this has caused people to remember why we want to focus on investing ourselves in the continent, reinvesting the profits which a few people see into opportunity, uh, opportunistic. And you're sounding almost like a prophetess because I was about uh -huh. dealing with the issue of uh, <laughs> the geopolitics, the, the Russian-Ukraine war and how it's impacting food security, um, the Black Sea Corridor issues, uh, issues about fertilizer reaching the continent and how, for instance, we have international agencies such as the UNDP reporting that the continent is facing a double crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic and then the onboarding of the um, Ukraine and Russian crisis. It's, it's all affecting issues surrounding food security here in Africa. How can Africa build resilience? So we've been extremely fortunate at AGRA to have uh, on our board previously uh, Strive Masiwa, as you know, the innovator and founder of Econet Wireless, and then he was followed by um, His Excellency Haile Mariam de Salen, both of whom really are leaders still in their various roles on the continent, many, many different um, leadership positions. But they push us at AGRA to continuously think forward to 2030. What's the Africa we want? We can be in the, the current uh, 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 looking at the, the downside and um, making a lot of headlines for global communities around crises. But when we look at the Africa we want, we see investors, we see opportunities, we see entrepreneurs and innovation. So I, I really see um, uh, 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 one of our uh, other board members, Ndidi Nunwele, has changed her business name to be the Africa change makers, right? Rather than talking uh, only about the, the, the deficits, let's talk about the story and drive the agenda. Because, you know, investment actually follows investment, right? So it's just like the, the uh, Wall Street investors. If right. somebody pulls out, everybody starts to panic, sell, sell, sell. But when someone goes in, they say, oh, why, why, why can't I buy that one? I want that stock. So we want to create that desirability, right? And, 
And Ghana has been on the forefront in times of driving the vision for uh, what's opportunity, what are the corridors in, in West Africa, and what's the trade investment agenda going to be for farmers to benefit. Because we don't want to leave behind people in rural communities. You don't want 30 million Ghanaians living in Accra or Kumasi, for sure. I wish we could go on and on, but unfortunately, we've been timed out. Thank you, Vanessa Adams, for joining us. Here on the Pulse. You're still with us here on the Pulse on the Joining Channel. We'll be right back. Please stay.